All right. Hello. Um, one o'clock snuck up on me. I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like it should still be the morning. Um, but welcome back. And uh, we're going to do some more fun coding with MongoDB, Stitch, and React, uh, two of my favorite things. Um, let me switch to the view here. Uh, so first, I uh, want to I want to point out that all of the videos that I take here are uploaded to YouTube and then put in this Stitchcraft um, playlist. And what I've done is I've taken that and it's now uh, a panel uh, on my, my Twitch channel. So it's easier to find uh, who would have known. Uh, so we have all of the six videos that I've done. Um, I, it was pointed out to me that they were not uploaded in, uh, in an HD quality 10, uh, or 1080 or, or 720. Uh, so I spent the, uh, the morning uh, with my coworker, Max, uh, trying to tweak my, my streaming settings uh, so I could accomplish that. And I, and I think we've done it. So um, yeah, I mean, what it all comes down to is, uh, yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm learning this as I go. Uh, so, so that will be fun, but, you know, make sure to, to check out, uh, the other ones after, after this is done, uh, I will be, uh, uploading it to, to YouTube as, as soon as I can. And that's where I'm going to put links to the code, uh, and then different things that we do today. Uh, today I wanted to talk about, um, query anywhere. Uh, <laughs> hi Max. <laughs> um, query anywhere is a feature of Stitch that allows you to use the MongoDB query language directly from your front end code. Uh, so that means that if you have a mobile app, uh, whether it be iOS or Android, or you're building a, um, a web app using something like React or maybe Angular or Vue or you know, whatever your flavor of, of uh, front end framework, uh, you, can, you can query the database directly from that code without having to um, build, build a backend. Uh, so back in the before times, like I would have to set up a, uh, node express, uh, application, maybe use mongoose, build out, uh, rest routes. Uh, and, and that's how my front end would connect. Uh, and, and what we'll go through today is how to just actually make the MongoDB queries directly from that front end. And, uh, and then add some rules to, to kind of give you some, some good uh, features uh, around that. And so if we go in and dig in, uh, so this is docs.mongodb.com slash stitch. Uh, so this is a great starting place for anything you're doing. Uh, we're going to go and look at uh, the query anywhere with stitch, just kind of to see. So there's a great live example uh, where we have um, a React, little React website um, with information about employees. Uh, and this is this is live, so you can kind of mess with it and, and, and play. But as you can see, uh, basically all it does is it lists out uh, all the employees in a table. Uh, and then we go in here and we actually look at what it's doing. We gotta go down to, um, we are, we are getting uh, an instance of the HR database uh, with the employees collection. Uh, and then we just simply run a find. So we're finding everything uh, and we're returning that as an array uh, and then passing it to the function display employees to where it gets built out. So this is what we're gonna play with today. Uh, and if you can continue to go down, uh, you can see how you can protect data with rules and we'll, we'll dive into that. And uh, but first, I guess we should, we can kind of start. So I had a hard time deciding, you know, what kind of app to build, um, to show you all the things that I need. I, I need something to where we can add things as different users, um, and then kind of change how it's displayed. So I want to be able to, to show you how you can only add and view your own stuff. You can add your own stuff, update your own stuff and see everything, uh, and then be restricted to only stuff that you've been invited in to see. Uh, so I'm gonna build like a simple little app that I'm calling a GIF collector, uh, which is just going to let us add records to the database uh, with a, a, an animated GIF URL uh, from Giphy. So very similar to what I had pulled up here. 
and then um, you know maybe put like a little description, maybe something on there, uh, and, and we'll go through the different rules and, and see how that works. So let's get started. One thing that I did before I started was I went in, so this is my uh, Atlas cluster I have logged in. I have put in my two-factor auth, uh, cutting out that time. This is the same cluster that I've been using. Um, I've still got plenty of, of space. Uh, it looks like I've only used 111.6 100, um, uh, KB of uh, my 512 meg for my free tier, so that's great. I'm gonna go over to the Stitch app and I've gone ahead and initialized a, a Stitch app as well. Let's see, there we go. And so here's all my Stitchcraft uh, applications, but I created this one here called uh, Stitchcraft Gift Collector. So let's redirect to that app and do a little bit of setup before we dive into the code. All right. So here is our handy uh, landing page. A lot of times I've been using uh, anonymous authentication, uh, but for today we're gonna use a very simple email password authentication. This will allow me to uh, switch between users without having to worry about having multiple uh, Google, uh, Google authentications or Facebook authentications. Um, it's really good for the demo. So we're just gonna go ahead and start by turning that on. So if we go over here to users, and you can see that there's no users. It's a fresh app. Uh, we're gonna turn on the email password uh, provider. You can see it's currently disabled with the other provider types that we have. And I'm going to enable that. Um, there's a lot that could be involved with, uh, with, with the email password. So you could actually create a registration form and have people sign up and create new users from your application. Uh, there's different ways to do that, depending on whether you um, want to do it from a mobile app versus a, a web app. Uh, but for all of this, I'm just going to kind of uh, fake this data because I'm going to add uh, them manually. So I'm going to say localhost confirm, and these will not actually be used. And can change that one to reset and the subject is reset and confirm and this will allow us to turn it on great so now we can go back over to users and we can start adding users uh, so let's create and these emails email addresses don't have to be um, real email addresses because we're just going to make them up as we go so let's say um, Person one at uh, mdb.com, and his password is going to be password one, password one. We'll create him or her. Um, no, I don't want to say that. We're going to add another one. This one will just be person2 at mdb.com. And we'll make this one password2. Very secure, but hopefully I won't forget them. We'll create them. And then we'll create one more. Why not? And this will be person3 at mdb.com. And password three password three all right so we got three users that can use this application that we're going to build uh, and besides getting the uh, the app ID that's that's really all we're going to need to do inside the the stitch console for right now uh, so let's switch over and I've already created a folder here and I'll the way I like to set things up is inside my folder, I like to have a directory uh, for my Stitch app. And, and that allows me to export my Stitch app uh, as a template. So that way anybody who's who's coming across my repo, if they wanted to start up their own Stitch app with my things, uh, it makes it easier for them. And so I always put that in there and I'll, I'll export all that stuff later. I have some, uh, some scripts that I use to, to 
to, to kind of facilitate that. Uh, and then the, the other folder that I put in there is whatever the front end is going to be. And so since it's going to be a web app, I, I typically call that uh, web UI. And that, um, and that I'm going to generate using create react app. So that's usually the starting point because you know, I wanna focus on uh, the, the meet the programming uh, and, and not like setting up, uh, you know, uh, what's that called? Wow, I've been using it so long. Um, like Babel and, and, and the other things. Uh, so I'm gonna do npx create react app and I'm gonna call it web UI. So it will generate that folder. Um, it's probably going, I think the new one generates um, the, the Git, uh, the local Git repo. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I'll blow that away because uh, I like to, to keep the, the Git repo uh, at this level. So we're gonna build that. Looks like we have a, uh, a European audience today. We got we got Max. I know he's in Paris, and then um, we got DJ over in in the UK. Hello, everybody. We're gonna wait uh, for npm to do its thing and generate that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So the first thing we're going to need is uh, to set up. Uh, a login, a login page. Uh, so we'll go through that uh, before we start uh, writing data to our database and uh, and uh, displaying it. So I've probably done a simple example like this before using uh, a Google authentication, but now I'm gonna just do kind of do the same thing using uh, email password. So I'm going to create a login control. Uh, and, and have it and pass that a, uh, a function to run whenever someone hits login and, and we'll be on our way. And so luckily I've done this a lot of times so I, I have some codes uh, already ready that I can copy and paste, uh, but we'll walk through it. Boy, maybe this is something I should have generated before I started. Can, I can speed it up by turning off the progress meter? Interesting. Hmm. It's like usually we're sitting here waiting uh, for it to spin up a cluster or, or spin up the, uh, the app, but, or the Stitch app, but not this time. Maybe next time I'll, I'll take that extra step <laughs> and do it. We're so close. Um, and I believe this is going to be using uh, Create React App uh, 2.0. Uh, so that came out. I haven't dug into a lot of the changes. I know that uh, the progressive web apps are now optional. And, uh, you know, for all of you, uh, what's it called? The Hooks, the Hooks fans, I haven't looked into that yet. So I will not be using Hooks um, um, for this app. So. We're going to be stateless uh, functional components and uh, and class components, depending on whether or not I need state. So close, so close. Um, so if anybody saw the tweet uh, that I went leading up to this, uh, I kind I mentioned uh, a star app. We'll be we'll be building a star app, and. This is, is something I like to call the apps that I build that work with uh, Stitch. So we got ST for Stitch, you got A for Atlas, and that's our MongoDB instance. And then the, the R is for React. And I guess you could add another R for Redux if you're going that far, we're not gonna need it. Um, cool. So now let's look, we've got our web UI. And it is a Git, so I'm gonna blow away the Git folder. I would, there's probably like a command um, where you can get rid of that. Cool. So now it's not that. And really, we're going to get init up here. Neat. Go back into the web UI. 
Uh, all right. So we should have a working app. And if we go to, if we do an NPM start, you should see it fire up um, the generic app. Don't be mean, be a start, right? Uh, there's also like Merm, you know, like it, that's what mine was, but what does that mean? Uh, sounds like a, a weird name. Oh, okay. So let's go back over here and drag this window over. And so it's it's starting that up. So it doesn't come out. Don't even know what a MERN is. I have no idea. Um, I do like that some people are calling the 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 view stack version Venom. Uh, so that that's that's fun. Because it's uh, it's Vue.js Express Node carrying the O and then Mongo uh, at the end. So Venom, that's nice. Uh, okay, so this is our, our app that we're going to have to start with, and we're really going to just tear it apart. So that's going to be fun. But while we're over here, let's open up another tab. Let's go ahead and, in, while we're at it, install uh, well, uh, the MongoDB Stitch Client. And so there's lots of different um, Stitch SDKs. Uh, we have them for Android. We have them for iOS. Uh, and then we have a couple for JavaScript. We have one that works uh, server side and then one that works browser side. Uh, and then we also have one for React Native. So I really hope to, to dive into the React Native one um, because that, that seems like fun. I like JavaScript and I've not really um, dove, dove into to building you know, native uh, mobile apps yet. So let's npm install mongodb stitch browser SDK. Let me make sure I spell that right because I'm doing this from memory. Dun, 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 and we got another progress bar. Why not? Let me go ahead and open up. Uh, let's do code dot so we can open up our IDE and start looking at things while it's happening. Mongo, MongoDB Express React Node.js Redux Webpack. That's that's too much. Um, yeah, can we can we upload this to Stitch Hosting? Um, so hosting uh, is is something that's currently in beta, and it kind of helps uh, close you know, close that gap. You know, your your backend is hosted with us, your data is hosted with us, but where do you hold, host your static files? Uh, you can now do it in in Stitch. And what you can do with uh, Create React App is you can do npm run build, and it will spit out assets that you can update upload to um, the the static hosting and it will just it will just serve them so that's great and uh, I need to practice a little bit more before I, I kind of get in front of y'all with it um, so let me go ahead and make this bigger and take a look here so that's that's done so if we look inside our package JSON uh, we have our MongoDB Stitch Browser SDK so let's go. to da, 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 the source folder and we're going to look at the app js and so i'm just going to go ahead and right under here i'm going to import um, our, our our stitch stuff so we are going to need um, stitch uh, the oh, what is it user Password credential. We might have to look that up. Credential. And we're also going to need the remote Mongo client uh, from MongoDB. Oh, good. 
stitch that. So these are these are what we're going to use. I don't know why I'm putting the semicolon in. Pretty is just going to take it away. Um, so these are these are what we're going to need to to set up access to um, our our stitch application. And so let's go in here and let's make a constructor. Constructor. And that accepts props. And we're going to super those props. And um, this is where I like to store the app ID. App ID is equal to. And now we need to go back to our console and, and actually grab that. So back to our console. And it's here, but we're working on, on placing it different places. So if you just go into clients, uh, we can copy it right from right there and go back over. And that's our, our stitch ID. So this is what's going to connect the application that we're building in React to um, the application that we have up in Stitch. That's that's really all of it, all that it takes. Um, we're gonna have some kind of default state. We'll figure that out in a minute. Um, but we'll go ahead and put that in there. And uh, let's go ahead and do set up our Stitch client. So we're gonna do that using uh, one of the lifecycle methods. We're gonna do component, component did mount. And so when the component mounts, uh, we are going to uh, initialize uh, the client. So I'm going to do this dot client is equal to, we're going to use that um, stitch that we that we pulled out. And it is we're going to initialize the default client. And we're going to pass that the app ID. Cool. And that's what we need for that. And then let's go ahead in the component that did mount, let's set up that MongoDB service as well. Uh, so we're going to do this dot, oh, not unsafe, got carried away. We're going to call that Mongo, what, did I, what do I usually call that? MongoDB. Uh, and, and this is where we're going to use the this.client dot. Uh, so the client that we just did, we're going to grab, we're going to get the a service client uh, for the remote MongoDB client dot factory. And we're choosing MongoDB that atlas cool all right and so we're gonna we're gonna use that later but the, that's gonna be hanging around uh, for us so uh, when the component mounts we're going to have uh, access to a client that we're gonna that we're gonna use um, so that's what connects us to our app and then we've gone ahead and uh, got a reference to um, our instance of MongoDB that's sitting in, in our atlas cluster that's linked to the, the stitch page And I think that's all we're going to do with that right now. Uh, so looking in what is being rendered to the page, um, go look at my other notes. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So really, we don't need any of the stuff that's that's in here. Um, what, did, what did I usually choose to keep? All right. Save. And I'm going to go over here. So I've, I've, I've mentioned this many, many times before, but I'm bad at, at styling things in CSS. And so I find that semantic UI React uh, helps me out a lot. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, npm install that. Um, and then we'll start using it uh, to wipe out what we have and, and put in what, what we want to, to create. So let's do npm install. And I should have 
So if we go into usage, semantic UI React. And we are going to grab some items from it. And so right now we are going to get, we're going to import um, the container, container and the header uh, from, is that what it is? I can't remember the name. Uh, yeah, semantic UI React. I'm going to try to do this while it's installing. Okay, um, and then let's just get rid of all of this, not needed, and we're going to give it a container. And let's get rid of the app CSS. We don't really need that right now. We also don't need this logo. Exciting. All right. So we are going to need um, a login control. And so I'm just going to go ahead and, and put that in and we'll, we'll build that here in a minute. So we're going to import login from, and that's going to be, oh, um, we're going to put that in a folder called components and it's going to be called login. And so we'll make that here in a minute. But inside this container, I'm going to go down and see how I did it over here, because there's no magic. Um, let's put in a header. And it's just going to be kind of the title. We'll, we'll make that an H1 header. H1. And I'm going to call it GIF collector. Collector. Victor. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, let's see what we look like right now. Let's make sure that we are done installing. We are done installing. Come back over to our React app. Um, I typoed it, apparently. Now that it's installed, I can just. Oh, I put a Y. Um, another thing you should know about me is I can't spell. Thank God for the world of um, spell check and, and Google and computers and everything that's keeping me on my, my touch. Can I just like not copy everything? All right. Say that and see if that failed to compile. Are we still running? No, oh, it's still compiling. But Stitchcraft is magic. Let me try. Why is it taking this long to compile? Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create that uh, components folder, components, and inside that components folder, stop it. There's a new file. It's going to be login.js. We'll go back over here and see if it's compiled yet. Line four. Yeah, okay, fine. That's fine. That's just, just a warning. Oh, look at that. GIF collector. Wonderful. Um, so that's, that's done. And so now bah, 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 we need to know if, uh, if it's authenticated. And so that's something that we're going to do, 
um, up here and, and, and set this and set the initial state and add that to the initial state. Um, so I am going to copy a couple lines. And replace. So now the state is going to start off with um, if if we are um, authenticated in in Stitch. Uh, and so now we can do grab that from state and do a nice little check. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you know what else we forgot? The, one thing that I need to do if I'm using this uh, semantic uh, library is to actually use the, um, the CSS that goes along with it. So up here we have index CSS and then underneath it, I'm going to put the semantic one. That's why it looked funny. Let's take a look. Oh, you know what? I also need to npm install that. Oh, yeah, yeah, compare, oh, compile. It contemplated having the uh, uh, login part done before I started. Um, maybe I should have did that. But I'll try to speed things up by uh, copying and pasting login controls. Um, okay. Let's go over here. And then that. And we're going to do a subset of that. Yeah, so uh, let's see. We're not going to use segment. Take that out. Um, so we're going to have. We're going to create a new component, and we are going to export that component. Okay, and we're going to build out. We do need the constructor. Props. Super. Props. And the initial state is going to look like so user input email default of zero to or to send to blank and password is also going to default to blank and we're gonna have an error message. Uh, I'm going to copy in this handle change. Uh, so whenever you add something to, uh, whenever you type into the, the form boxes, this is all kind of uh, your, your basic uh, React uh, form wizardry, if you will. Uh, we're going to make it uh, update on change uh, and, and, and fill in the state. And then we got our render method. And we are going to grab some items from the state. Cool. 
cool. And then we're also going to um, pass into this component uh, via props a login user function. Uh, and so we'll write that in the app and then pass it in. Uh, so we can do our, our login. And we are going to return some JSX. Um, and we're going to use, I'm just going to copy this form in that I use from where else. Uh, so we're setting the on submit to the form to actually run this uh, login user function that we're passing in. Um, and it's, it's going to, to pass, uh, well, actually, let's simplify this. This is coming from something that allowed multiple types of login, but we're just going to send them um, the email and the password. Uh, we're gonna catch any error and we're gonna set that to the error message so that will we'll pop up. Uh, did I copy in that? So we got form, do, 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 do. where is the error? Oh, it's in there, yeah. Uh, and so we'll set the error message if there's any kind of error. Uh, we're using an input of uh, email. Um, we're using uh, an email of, of type password uh, to, to do the email and the password. Uh, if there is an error message present, it's going to display it. Um, and then we got a, a nice little submit button. So this is, this is really the, what the login form does. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything in, in pulling it all over. Uh, and so now we can actually just go back and we can throw this in, log in, um, and it needs the, what was the name of that prop? The login user function. And we will fill that in here in a minute. Um, but let's see that pop up. Hmm, 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 okay. I'm doing a couple different things here. Uh, so we are going to change this around and we're gonna set this initial state to false because at this moment we don't have the client and we are going to, at the end, we're gonna do call this dot set state, and we are going to set is opt to this dot client dot off. Well, actually, let's just copy that down. We're not even using this right now, but it will be important here in just a second. I feel like Bob Ross when I'm doing this. If you want me to talk about happy little trees uh, or, or giving things friends, just using my, my softest, most soothing voice, let me get rid of this line. Save. And fine, it doesn't like that I, I left that. Empty. There we go. Taking a long time to compile. Well, in that case, let's continue on. Code a tree and a happy little cloud. Happy little semicolons. Oh, those semicolons go away. I am, uh, yeah, I'm using prettier and, uh, you know, but you know, if you like them, add them, appease the semicolon gods, as we used to say. Uh, where is my login function? All right. So we are going to create a function um, and it's an async 
I get three now. Sync. And it takes an email and a password. So we'll console.log log in. And we'll go ahead and add that into the login. Just not login. Let's just do just not login. And so we'll pass that over. And that will be the function that runs. We'll, we'll continue that in a minute. See if it pops up. Login is not defined. Login. Oh, duh. Get rid of these happy little comments. Let that recompile. I like that's going a little slow. Cool. All right. So now we have a, a simple little uh, email and password. And if we do person one at mdb.com and person oh, password one. It's not going to do anything. Let's pull up the, there we go. Um, yeah, login, we just console.logged. Uh, and I'm going to go in here and change this guy to Just log in because um, it pleases me. All right, so now we just need to make that actually log in. Um, we'll go back over uh, to our login function that we started, and I'm going to pull it up over here as well. This is where I'm going to find out if I uh, if I type out the name of that uh, credential that we're going to be using. Um, so we are going to do, we're going to grab, um, is opt, uh, from this dot state because we're going to do if is op, we are just going to return, um, because we don't need to, to log in twice. I don't even think that would happen. Uh, and then we can go on uh, and we can do equals a new user password credential. User password credential. User password credential. All right. Hey, I did it. Um, and so we create a new user password credential um, that we've pulled in up here, and uh, we pass it the email and the password that is being passed into this function. All right, and now we can um, await this dot client dot off dot login with credential and give it that credential. That is just too big of a name. Let me shorten this. Um, I'm going to pass it the credential that we just created. And we're going to set this dot set state is off to true. 
and get rid of the console log. All right, and so this is just a very, very simple function. That's all we need to, to log in using uh, email and password. And I took like 30 minutes to do it all. Um, so now let's only show the login if they're not authenticated. And that's really simple to do because we know uh, from the state if it's auth or not. Uh, and so I'm just going to do a conditional here. I'm gonna say is auth. Um, if it is, then we're going to display, we'll just, let's start out with a div that says I'm off. Uh, otherwise, we are going to display the login. All right. Thank you, prettier. Uh, and so now we can do person one at mdb.com and password one. And I'm off. Sweet. Um, one thing that we might want to think about doing. Um, does it throw an error if you use the wrong credentials? Well, let's find out. Except for the fact that um, we did not create a log out button. Um, that would have been helpful. So do I, did I, do I have one that I can grab over here? Uh, do, 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 do. Thought I could just put this. Oh no, I put it somewhere else. Um, so let's just refresh. <laughs> yeah, let's let's work on that uh, log out button real quick. <laughs> this is so much fun. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, back over here. Uh, so I got I'm off, but we are also going to do a, a button um, on click equals uh, yeah, I think we're... oops did it twice and that needs to be uh, let's go into the hold on, let me check. Yeah, let's do this. It's going to be this dot client dot off dot log out. And hopefully that should just be enough. Um, and we'll do refresh. Mm -hmm. Yep. I remember these using used to compile faster. Okay, cool. So now we, if we log out, oh, hold on just a second, because I bet you this is not going to work the way I thought it was going to. Um, yep, because then you also have to set state. Or else it's not going to do anything. So we're going to to log out by calling uh, this client off and log out. So that's just the function that's given for you. Uh, and then we're going to set the state so the whole page refreshes, or so the section refreshes. Did it? Okay, cool. All right, so here we go. 
put in is defined but never used. No, I guess I could have used their button. Cool, so we've logged out, hey, hey. Uh, but now let's try using um, a credential that's wrong. And I'll just say adrian at gmail.com and I'll just type in some randomness and I'll hit login. Login failed, invalid username, password. And so that was all given back uh, from the, uh, from Stitch. So if we remember back over here in the login, um, I'm catching the error and then I'm just setting the error dot message uh, in the state and that's making that, that uh, error message show up. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it does do that. That's, that's kind of nice. And so you can handle that in, in, in different ways, uh, however, however you like. Cool. All right. So let's see what we can get done here. Let's log in with somebody real. Uh, real mdb.com and password one. Cool. Yeah, I, I really should have uh, kind of started with this. Um, so all of this part would have been done. Uh, but because we get to do more fun things with, uh, with forms. Um, and so currently our database is empty. Uh, sad face. Uh, so we need... Um, need to work on that. So let's go back to our app. And so now basically we have is uh, that, that we're off. Uh, I'm going to let me just update this button because it's upsetting. So da, 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 da. we're gonna use a capital button. Button um on click is the same let's make it a primary button and yeah so that's fine all right so we're going to keep the button but now we need to do something um something different if if, if we're off so uh we need a form to add something to the database so let's create another component and we're going to call it, I'm not in the right thing. There we go. New file. Uh, let's see, what do we call uh, a, con a component that adds things? Because um, I kind of want to make it I'll just call it let's see add gift.js right now. And I'm gonna go over here and steal some stuff up from the top. And so yeah, it's gonna need state. So class add gift. Um, extends component Oop. and we're going to export default add gift. I can never remember if it's export or exports it's export it's like I do this all the time. Uh, constructor ops super ops. Forgot some things. Uh, super props. This dot state. We don't know what that's going to look like right now. Um, do, 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 do. there's going to be a render a render function and it's going to return some kind of JSX probably a div 
Um, spelling error there. Cool. And let's steal some form stuff from up here that we're going to need. Oh, huh. We don't need that button. Um, we'll start with that. And actually, it's not going to be a div, it's going to be a form. All right, so what are we writing? We need a, uh, let's say a GIF URL. We need um, maybe some kind of description that I Probably that I spelled wrong. Description. Oh, not spelled wrong. That's green. Uh, description. And that's probably good for right now. Let's do that. Less less uh, inputs that we have to do. And so in this form, we are going to use. Look at how we did this with inputs. We're going to do form dot input. Okay. Label. Let's do keep URL. Dun, 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 dun. What else do we need? Um, need a name. name equals gif URL. Set the set the default value. Let's just copy these things. the D. Um, and so this is actually going to be that I pulled all this stuff out, didn't I? Yeah. So let's um, if URL and description from this dot state. And so the default value here is going to be gif URL. And we're gonna need that handle change function. It's pretty much the same for like every, every time you're using forms. So let me just paste that in. Uh, so we have one input that grabs the gif URL Let's grab another input and change it to be the description. Description, and let's description and description, handle change. Now, if we throw this in here, Bring it up from the top. So this is a, we're going to bring in another component. Um, add gif from components gif. And then right now we're not passing in any uh, properties, but we're going to need to create one uh, that adds that that actually adds it. Dun, 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 dun. So let's go ahead and stick him under the, oh, I guess above the button. So 
So let's add GIF. And let's see if he shows up. Button is not defined. That's weird. Did I take it out of the wrong place? Okay, cool. So we're we're still off, and we have the ability to um, put in a GIF URL and description. So uh, similar to how we did um, the login, we're going to want to pass in a function um, to to actually to take care of that. But we're also going to need a button on on here to, uh, for submitting. So I'm just going to steal the one from here. Uh, form that button. Type equals submit. Um, I'm going to take the icon out, I think. Uh, so inside the form, we got to form the button. I'm going to take the icon out. And I'm going to call it add. Okay. So we can see that pop up. Cool. It's kind of a mess, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm not using those anymore. Um, and the submit of the form, did we do that? We did not. So we're going to need what to do whenever that button uh, gets hit. And so we're going to do something very similar to this. Um, very similar, but not the same. So we'll call this, oh, and then let's see. We're gonna need to pull something from props, so now's a good time to figure out what it is. Um, um, add GIF handler, is that how I can do it in PowerPoint? handle. I did it backwards. Handle, add GIF. And we're going to pull that from this.props. And so whenever the submit button is, is uh, clicked, we're going to run this handle add GIF, and we're going to pass it um, the these two things. So the GIF and the GIF URL and the description. And I'm just going to take this off right now since I've decided at this moment not to put in the message. Uh, so let's build that function over here. And so this is where we're going to get into uh, Query Anywhere. Um, you know, not to show the thing yet, but to actually do do the insert. Uh, so let's get that working. Um, so we are going to need another function up here, and we're going to call it handle add gif, and that is going to be an async function, and it takes the gif URL in the description. Uh, and let's add this in. So, add gif, and it needs a handle add gif equal to this dot handle add gif. And so we pass that over. All right, so let's write this function. Okay, so this is where we're going to use um, this MongoDB 
reference that we, we created. So this.mongodb. And so we can do this.mongodb dot db we can pull in our database which i have not created one yet uh, but we'll call this uh gifts or wait the database i think i'm just using data i have one database and we don't need a separate database for this app right now uh, and then the collection is going to be gifts and then we are going to do a insert one and you can see that this takes a document and so we're going to decide what our document is going to look like um, i'm going to do uh, just realize that there was there's something we didn't set up in our, our stitch console uh, and so we'll do that in just a minute but we're going to pass it the gif url The description uh, and we're going to pass it something called the owner ID and so this is the currently authenticated users ID so we can do this dot off dot um, well hold on just a second how do I get that ID? I forgot. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Let's go over to the stitch documentation, which is on that side. Um, so let's go back to uh, stitch docs and we can pull up the SDK docs. Mm -hmm -hmm. Client SDKs, JavaScript browser. Um, and we need to find the auth user. Stitch auth. Oh, how about just dot user? Return to stitch user. Okay, auth dot user dot ID and that should do it. Um, so we'll we'll just write those for right now and let's save that and, and then I guess while we're over here, take a look at the documentation and see what that returns. Actually, I'll just console log it. Then result uh, to console log should work. Um, okay, so let's go back over to our stitch console real quick um, because part of the whole thing that I wanted to, to talk about today was um, <laughs> query anywhere. And so it's, for that to work, we need to set up some rules. Uh, so there are many different kinds of rules. Uh, so we need to, or many different things you can do with rules. We're going to be using templates. Um, so I need to add the collection. Uh, and so the database name, that's data. And we just decided that this is going to, the collection name is going to be GIFs. And then we need to select a, a template. And to start off, we're going to use one of them, um, one of the built-in ones. Uh, and we're going to choose users can read, only read and write their own data. Uh, and so the field name for user ID, that's where we did owner ID. So that's the reason that I was uh, setting up or I added that, that field into the document that we're going to be inserting uh, because it's going to use that to determine whether or not the logged in user is able to see that record. Um, so let's go ahead and add that collection. And then we can kind of go in and look and see what's going on. And so what it did is it created a role called owner. And if we look at that, uh, the owner, uh, that's the name of the field. 
and then it applies when the owner ID of the document matches the user ID. Uh, and this allows people to insert documents and delete documents uh, at the collection level. And so we need that right now, uh, but later I'll go in and we can change it and we can see how that affects, um, I, I might have to, I have to pick this up another day, but uh, if we if we were to change this, we could see how that affects what we what we can view um, in this application. So let's go back over uh, to our app and see if uh, that actually worked. So let's go back. I have this GIF pulled up, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's grab that uh, URL. We're gonna put that in there, and the description I'm gonna put is I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm going to click add. Ooh, and it didn't work. Cannot read property user of undefined. Oh, ha, 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 ha. That's funny. Here's the thing that I forgot. This dot client dot user dot auth dot ID. That's why the uh, IntelliSense wasn't working. So we got off, we got user, we got ID. Should have known something was up whenever the IntelliSense wasn't working for me. So let's go over here and try this again, perhaps. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna add. I know I, did I just not click it? Oh, wait, let's make sure I didn't. Okay, I didn't make it a type or something else. Should put in some more console logs and that would have been fun. Okay, let's go and make sure that, that is handle add gif, handle add gif. Oh wait, do I need to Never have too many console logs, right? Just flood it, flood it all with there. So, um, console.log adding GIF. And let's go ahead and put a dot catch. Win. Win. It's disconnected. Did I did I break the the build? No, that's fine. Okay, you know, let's refresh. Make it happy. Okay, we're just gonna use that. We're gonna use that. Add add a GIF. You know what, I'm not telling it to clear it or anything. So let's go and actually see what's happening inside our database. Uh, so if we go, let's go back to our, our clusters and we're gonna use, since I'm not actually querying, I'm gonna use um, uh, Data Explorer. Because we might have actually just inter inserted this three times. Because the part that I haven't built is where it displays what I added. Um, oh, oh, that's the wrong database. 
there and there are in fact three documents <laughs> and none of them have the right URL. Okay, um, so I'm gonna delete these documents. Oops, oh my gosh. All right, yeah, console log driven, swell. Um, so in here, we're not passing over uh, the stuff. So I'm pulling it from state in here. Let's console log this. Wow, that's taking a long time to, to rebuild. And that, and that. Hmm. Oh, so those are. That's why I copied and pasted that handle change and it's um putting it into the this input. Okay, so we're going to set this uh, the state, the previous state goes to um That's a dot. Okay. What? I fixed it. There we go. Yeah, it's like it's really slow the the build. Aha. Okay, so that was the issue. Um, so We'll put that back in. And yeah, I'm, I'm still not telling it, you know, how to, what, what to do. Uh, so what we'll do is we will, after we handle the add gif, we will just do this.set state and we're gonna blank out those values. Uh, we're gonna set it to this, so that way, blank those out. Okay, cool. That, that, add, adding GIF. And if we go back over to our data access and refresh this collection, hey, here we go. <laughs> so we've added it, we've got the GIF URL, we've got uh, the description, and we've got the owner ID, which will match up to uh, the owner ID of the logged in user. So if we go and look, um, you can kind of see that, it, that it's that ID right there. Um, and unfortunately, I took way too much time uh, doing the login. 
and I'm gonna have to end here. Um, but that was very brief uh, using Query Anywhere to insert. Um, I will try to pick this back up and and do uh, use the Query Anywhere to to pull the items back out uh, and then make it to where we can log in as different people and add things and kind of see how that that affects it based on uh, on rules. Um, so that's all uh, we've got for right now. Um, I'll try to make sure I do another one here real quick uh, to finish this up. Uh, but thanks for, for coming out. I have to uh, run to a meeting. Uh, I'm glad that I, I pushed that meeting back a half hour. Uh, but thanks for coming. And this will be up uh, on the, the StitchCraft playlist um, sometime later this week. Uh, bye. And now i got to find the opportunity. Uh, see everyone later.